we sit down with Harry Helderman to talk about his nearly 30-year career with Liberty Life in the financial services industry. We touch on many points of insurance and the industry within South Africa and worldwide. And we look at why and how Harry chose to stay with Liberty for so long and how moving within the company enabled him to upskill and diversify his skill set while still building a career of his dreams. This is a great one for those of you in financial services or considering getting into the industry. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations with Champions, the Leadership Edition. And uh, right, and we are up and running. So, Kerry, we had the opportunity to chat last week briefly. I've uh, got in touch with you to congratulate you on your fantastic work anniversary. Um, I can't believe that you forced us to wear jackets and ties for this interview. <laughs> So, Harry Helderman, welcome to uh, the Coffee and Conversations with Champions Leadership Edition, because that's why you're here. This is the Leadership Edition podcast, dude. And um, it's an honor to have you on the show and to chat to you about your career. So, thank you for making the time. Thanks very much, Nick. The one thing I'm still waiting for is this, I mean, you're, you're calling it coffee all the time, but no one yes. has been... Knocking at my door with a cappuccino at all, or a, I don't have any, but <laughs> I would have, I would have at least assumed that there's a donut on the should, way for me. You know, it, it's actually a really great point, and I think that that's the least I could do. So uh, we're, we're going to have to start to put little coffee sets together and get them out to our guests. So at least, you know, with a mug and some beans and uh, stuff, the least we can have a decent cup of coffee. So I think, all right. So when you start to see that happening on the future, in the future, you know, that was your idea. But I can see you thinking, well, how does that help me now? <laughs> 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 you, can still send it. you can still send it at some later stage. Stage, okay, deal. You have a deal, 100%. So, Harry, we met when uh, I was at Liberty, and, um, you know, I think I was at Liberty from 95 for a couple of years and then went into the franchise route and left franchise to um, basically open the gym, So, which was probably about 15 years ago. But how long have you been at Liberty now? I started on the 4th of January 1995, so that would give sure. me probably 28 years, yes. I think. Okay. Well, is that the clock? I mean, I'm supposed to be in financial services, and if I can't count 28, <laughs> but it is weird when you've been there this long. They just sort of tend to just start running one into the other, one day, one day into the other. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's crazy. And I think th those were very different times in terms of financial services when we started, because there was no, you know, there was no phase, there was no FICA, there was policy replacement was rife in how most guys really ran their did business, um, you know, before the industry really straightened itself out. So can you give us a little bit of background as to who you are and sort of your career path? through Liberty, because I think it's absolutely fantastic. And um, it's quite admirable to have built such a long term career within a corporate. And it's not something that we see happen often. And I think it is something that people should actually consider a lot more. Well, I know, yeah. um, <laughs> thanks, Nick. Um, I started off in 95 as a broker consultant at Liberty. And when you are talking about when I started there, then there was not even a quote system at that play, at that particular time. You still had to do calculations with the rate book. Yep. Um, which I think I actually might have one somewhere in a cupboard in the house if I really, sure. if I really try and look for it to find that old rate book. But um, you had to do the calculations, mm -hmm. and if you're looking at a, at, at a, for example, a risk policy, you effectively had very little um, when you, uh, um, you you only had like disability total disability occupational mm -hmm. disability and own occupational that was the three things 
there was a something called greater disease and we called it a liberty a living lifestyle which had 11 greater diseases and we had more than any other than company anyone at that else. yeah absolutely and it's an amazing thing and, and liberty brought out at that time what was quite amazing was the universal concept yeah and it sort of it was an amazing thing where there was an investment portion attached to this particular policy um which in later years it, it became a, a it, it all fell away and people didn't mm. want that particular style of policy anymore but i can tell you this the people that still have it that have now been able there's people that are still being covered mm -hmm. without having paid a premium in the last 10 15 years and they still got cover on those policies you know so i think it was quite yeah. It, absolutely, and, and sorry to to cut in here, but something that I'm quite passionate. I'm a big fan of the universal lifestyle because it was missold, um, or it was that it was replaced under the pretext of oh look how expensive your life insurance is, and oh we can give you a little bit of cash, but it, the reality is the design of that policy was so far ahead of its time. In terms of pay this until your your cash value reaches X, and when you're older, uninsurable, and perhaps with limited funds from your your retirement savings, your life cover and your dread disease and disability are taken care of. You know, yeah. what a phenomenal concept. Yeah, and you know what was also quite what was also quite amazing is when I was a broker consultant initially, there was not even cell phones. Yep. You had an office and you had paper and that was the way that you did it. You went out and you had to make phone calls and plan and, and, and get a broker appointments yep. up front to the diary of the financial advisors and you tried to go and do it like that, which was quite amazing because then, I mean, and Friday was your big admin day, which was always yep. fantastic. That's it. And I think, you know, it's what people don't understand when you're talking about rate books you know, where you have a rate per 10,000 or 100,000 for a specific disorder based on age and so on. And then the client, if he wanted immediate cover, you would have those immediate cover certificates with you that you would fill yeah. out and take a check for the first premium and go back. Yeah. And the guy was covered to a portion without underwriting. I mean, amazing, amazing, simple days. Huh? <laughs> It was, it was quite, it was, uh -huh. it was quite amazing. And then um, I can still remember now, I had mm. to, you know, when you, when you were in the company, you had to go buy your first cell phone and how, how mm. important the business to a cell phone became. If I'm looking at my life today, yeah, I mean, my whole email, everything can happen on a cell phone. I prefer working sometimes on the cell phone yes. than what I do on the phone. And I mean, I can take a meeting while I'm driving to the next meeting, at least. You can listen into some meetings if you don't have to participate in that, uh, all the time. Absolutely. But in those days, I mean, the cell phone, they were like those old, oh, when you had that extended battery Nokia 2110. Yep, which was the, the big fat battery on the people. back. <laughs> you, you did, you could kill people. Anyway, yep. so I, I knew, which was quite amazing with Liberty, was we were the first company that brought out uh that, that that brought out for the financial advisors, the IFA and the agents mm. and also the broker consultants, what was then called a point of sale system initially. Yeah. And that became Blueprint Online, which became like a full on financial plan. Yes. And if you also think back about stuff like that, Liberty was the first company that brought out, well, let's go back. I mean, I saw uh, Unit Trust was the first one was the yep. card bank. Then you had retirement annuities that came via Liberty. And now, you, and then you had the DPFM, which was a wonderful study guide, yes, which is today, absolutely. which is today CFP. Yes. Um, but at the time, that was at the leading edge of, of of knowledge that Liberty brought out, and they trained all broker consultants on all of that stuff. Today, you you yeah. you go to universities to get this stuff, um, and as things change, and you but know, what's and a that, wonderful yeah. thing. and and that was all in house, and and as an as a consultant. You had pre-contract training and then your initial training period where you got abused by Barry Mocky and, and Andre von Furen. Yeah. <laughs> Show, sell, me, sell me this pen. <laughs> no, I know. And, and yep. you know, and then things sort of, and then it mm. was, that was quite amazing to, to see and work through all of those things and, yes. and how the, the industry changed. I mean, like, 
we it was this and, and specifically in Joburg where we initially when I started everything was built on personal relationships yes and they've used this word relationship and sometimes even today we struggle with this word relationship where we we financial advisors and, and, and agents I mean well, specifically you it becomes um, no, you've got to have a bri at my house. Mm. And it can still happen in, happen in the plot line, but in, in Joburg, it moved away from that. Right. We are now talking business relationships, and I can see that the more professional broker consultants have become, it wasn't like that in my day. In my day, it was all about having the lunches and the bri's and all mm. of those things. But as things have changed, now it is a business relationship. If you do not, are not able to add value to that financial advisor, then you've got, then you are, it's it's completely different and specifically right. it started happening in the cities initially and, and even today if you're looking at what what how and how the amazing training that liberty store provides for their broker consultants mm. um it is all about maintaining that business relationship where there is both parties actually have a win-win from that particular situation right. it's not about the lunches and all of those things have gone on but in any case yeah um so long time at Liberty, we can probably talk more about some mm. of the Liberty stuff, but eventually I went and and, and I got approached to, to join within the Liberty stable, but it was the first Lisp, Lisp style mm -hmm. investment company that Liberty launched. It was a company called Millennium and it was a full on Lisp. But in terms right. of Lisp, there was only like three companies. It was M cubed and something like it was M cubed. And I think there was three Lisp companies, three or four Lisp companies that existed at that particular time. And then you were looking at, and I joined that particular company, which was under the Liberty Stable, but it was a separate company called called Millennium. And it mm -hmm. had secondhand endowments, which mm -hmm. was an amazing product at the time. Yes. And the secondhand endowment, that market got closed down when there was double CGT, when the law said, no, you've got to start paying CGT yes. within the you you got to pay double CGT on that particular product. So that products have really they had they had a big boom. But the Lisp industry from those days have gone on tremendously. And I'm talking now. Yes, I can't remember when the, when I left Liberty. Let's call ninety five or what mm -hmm. is it? I, you know, I probably left after about five six years, and I left. Well, yeah, ninety nine two thousand is when I when I joined Millennium. And we were like three broker consultants, myself, and, and then uh, Richard Brown came mm -hmm. along. And it's amazing business at the time. I mean, today Richard is a very successful uh, fran uh, franchise principal, entrepreneur principal at Liberty. Um, but that was that was quite amazing days when you were were, and and was also the days when different style of investment investing started, and you suddenly got. That's pre-multi manager. You had fund yes. of funds and yeah. all of those types of things that started becoming the flavor of the month. So it was either and there was wrap funds and fund of funds, which eventually culminated into multi manager. And now today we're looking basically at goal based investing. So these things have changed tremendously over the years for the particular clients. Um, right. So in any case, so Millennium became a company called Liberty Specialized Investments when mm -hmm. the when the Unit Trust Act changed into the Collective Investment Act, um, and it became, and there was Liberty Collective Investments, and we had Liberty Specialized Investments. So, the old Guard Bank, which was the Unit Trust Company, became Liberty Collective Investments, and we became right. Liberty Specialized Investments at the time, um, running side side by side. Because that you you um, you know the problem with the Lisp style product is if you are and I think it is still one of the biggest problems for 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 all people and um, companies that are running, um, well, linked investment products is that if you are not getting assets under management on those particular products, they are very 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 costly for a company yes. to be running. Right. You you there's almost no break even point in real reality that you can ever reach where where you are able to make profit if you are not having assets under management. So therefore, you needed to have the the asset management company next to that. Um, then I was, then I got, then we, I was sitting at that Liberty Specialized Investment 
And I moved there from a broker consultant into mm -hmm. the first time that I went into management. Right. Became a sales manager there with a, with a team of people. Um, from there onwards, we got into another merger, which was enough. I think people forget how big that merger was at the time. Because you had the Standard Bank um, and Liberty mm. stable of products merging. There was actually effectively six or eight companies, if I remember correctly, that all had to merge into this one company called Standard. Yes. You had Standard Bank Asset Management. You had Standard Bank uh, uh, List-style products. You had the multi-manager companies. Everyone had to merge into that, which was quite a difficult situation um, initially. And then you had different ownerships with Liberty and mm -hmm. Standard Bank. And, and since then, and they were 50-50 at the time, so caused a lot of anxiety. But that yes. um, once we've seen into that particular company, it became unbelievable. I mean, if you're looking mm -hmm. at what those broker consultants in my team had to do, um, over time, um, I mean, I've got still people that can remember we did a billion rands worth of new assets under uh, assets mm. per month into to, sure. into into the group, which was which was totally unbelievable stuff at the time. We are talking now what 15, 20 years ago, yeah, where we were bringing start type of business into Lisp style product, but it was also that time when Lisp style products really really took off, and we saw. And we had a huge market share at that particular time bringing it in and also offshore investing and then eventually offshore lisps and all of those things came into the fold um which was which was really exciting and i can say that from myself as my mm -hmm. career i must have that was probably one of my absolute favorite times of working because i mean i i i get my energy from 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 people um, yes so for me, it is incredibly important, and, and I have got people that started working for me that have gone on and became intensely successful. Um, at the time, the broker consultant post that I had, and I can call a couple of names, there was like mm -hmm. Safrat Mohammed, that is one, the best broker consultant in Liberty for a couple of years in a row here. We have got Sohel Ghani, that was, that is today a regional head at Liberty. There's Gloria Estampir, Sumaya, mm -hmm. Ibrahim, all the, they are all over the place and they all became incredibly successful not through me but all working together as one team right um, and not taking, and not allowing for 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 weaknesses but actually making sure that everyone is supporting everyone else um and that was quite amazing it was probably one of my best times and the most fun we've uh, I've had in my career um and then liberty bought standard bank out of standard Yes. Um, and then I got moved back into Liberty. And that was a completely different ballgame for me. I got moved into what was then called, called Liberty Franchise Division. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of the second time that I had to start dealing with you guys, with, with the Nick Ingalls and the Herefords and all of these people. <laughs> And it Absolutely. took me completely out of my comfort zone. I mean, if you right. want to understand how you can get pulled out of your comfort zone, is right. when you are suddenly being thrown into the agency force. Right. And I couldn't understand Ian van Squared why, why. I mean, that was not my strength. My strength was running a lot of broker consultants and a team of, of busy, uh, sales team. You're right. That is what I got strength from. And the next thing, I'm a regional head in franchise division, which I couldn't understand. I mean, and then <laughs> you go into this thing, it was... Nick, and fran was franchise was a different animal, huh? Oh, it was a different animal. Yeah. It was so, so different. I mean, you had you had these entrepreneurs, and what was so difficult for me is they make you this regional head, and, and you sort of expect from, you know, like there is a hierarchy in your mm. mind. Yes. Where you, there's, there's a hierarchy. I'm the manager. I'm the regional head here. You need to... You need to listen to what I tell you. And <laughs> suddenly you're working with entrepreneurs. They tell you what they want. And it's right. completely different. And you suddenly yeah. have to move away. And I had to stop, walk away from managing people, but to start working with people. And yeah. and it was completely different from, from building a partnership rather than having 
you are the manager of a group of people and suddenly you had to work just in a partnership thing which was quite difficult initially but if you want to understand how difficult the franchise division is it is mm. Um, and, I, and I can tell you, there's after a lot of things that I've learned from very clever people like Michael Van der Lok and, mm. and, and, and the Mark Fenskis and the Steph de Reiterl and the, the mm-hmm. George Slotry. Uh, I have seen some of the most unbelievable businesses pick up there and, and small businesses that, that made people a really good money. But if you want to be successful in, in any of this type of things, there's basically three rules that you have to follow. First one is if you stop recruiting for five minutes, it's over. The game is over. Your business yep. will end. Yep. And that holds true in any of these sales divisions. And I mean, what is so amazing for me, where I'm sitting now, and I'm looking at, we still see the Limera stats. And I think the Limera stats came out in mm. the 1980s or late 70s, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Which was international i mean that's an international mm. writing and it said that every that two out of ten financial advisors throughout the world that start is still around sure that's five fantastic. years yeah okay but yeah. i think that's still fantastic that it's so many because it's a it's a yeah. tough game uh, yeah but if you <laughs> if you now look at those stats it is mm. still the stats that are true or the stats that everyone try and beat yes because it, it, it stays that difficult for financial advisors. And if you're looking at how the industry has changed from being salesmen to financial advisors mm. and how professional these people are, I mean, I I am, most of my life, I'm in awe at how unbelievable financial advisors, whether you're an yeah. IFA or whether you're an agent or, or a bank broker, and you're working for the large conglomerates and the P- mm. PSGs and all of those things, it is unbelievable the professionalism that we have in this industry yeah. today. Yeah, you're going to find the fly by night, and you're going to find the arbitrary oak that has to that that is doing the wrong thing. It's the nature of it's the nature of this game. But yeah. the the people that I have had to deal with over my career, I mean, I am just this is hats off to those people. It is it is unbelievable how. The quality that of people mm. that we have in South Africa, and I'm also incredibly, if you're looking at 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 how this market has changed. Sorry, there's a lot of thing before I carry mm. on my little career. How this market has changed and bringing in um, the different nationalities from mm-hmm. in, in from South Africa and the different yes. people, and how you are seeing successful people coming out um, in from the different markets and coming into the into into the main market it is it is right. unbelievable how good and successful these people are and and how the market is changing in in bringing in financial advisors of all colors and mm-hmm. but the only thing that makes them that makes them um, so good is that the knowledge that they have bring in the time that they spend in gaining the knowledge and and how they do financial planning at the end of the day because financial right. planning is the only way into getting because you still have to do sales yep at the end of the day that's the one that is going to bring the commission in but it is unbelievable how financial planning brings long-term success to these financial advisors um, and the people that we're bringing in but so as to say we're still trying to beat the um the lumbra that stays a very difficult thing mm-hmm. um, and the problem with it is now where you are sitting in south africa with uh with this incredibly high um, unemployment rate in South Africa, you see right. a lot of youngsters just taking a chance in this thing, which is costing insurance companies quite a lot of money to try and train them up. But they're just yes. going in there to see whether it it might stick or whether it's not going to stick. So specifically now, it is very difficult to try and get to these level to to, to try and get. The, the advisors to stay because you, you're getting really good people, but they're just doing it because they for the lack of finding something else. The whole time when they're with yeah. you, they're looking for something else. Any case, so but, I got yeah. into this. Mm. Right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was going to say just on that, it's, you know, the, the similarities between working as a consultant and working as a manager uh, of, of a team are very similar. You, it comes down to the quality of your prospects. You know, if you want to have build a book, uh, a, a good insurance book, 
you have to have the quality prospects. You have to have that quality base of clients referring people who are going to stay with you and are going to stick with you. And I suppose that's the same with the managers. You've got to recruit the quality. And the, the guy, it's all about, is this guy going to be with me in 5, 10, 15, 20 years? And if not, then don't put the energy into that. And I think for you, oh, sorry, yep. Now, remember when we spoke earlier, it's about the value mm. add. Yeah. What do, you get, what do I get from you and what do you get from me? From me. And if most Absolutely. people are not happy, it's not a best friend relationship anymore. We, we, I have yeah. my best friends outside of work. It's a business relationship. So let's yes. get this thing to work for both parties. What value can they add to you and what value can you add to that to person? Them. Then it's, it works. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And I think with In that, case, yeah. With the franchise model, and so that's dealing with franchisees, right? You're dealing with entrepreneurs who are looking at building businesses beyond targets for the month. And I think yeah. that that's a very, very different mindset um, to where the industry yeah. has shifted. Yeah, absolutely. So it's crazy. Yeah, mm. and, then, and, and then when we were doing that franchise division, so at the time we were like, Probably franchise division at the time was probably about 400 advisors strong. Right. Weirdly, weirdly enough, with about 78 different businesses. So the first time I walked in, <laughs> and I'm not even understand, I'm not even understanding what is going on here. And 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 the divisional director said to me, "Get in your car. We're going to close down these five businesses." Right. I haven't met these people in my life, and we had to go close down because you're sitting with 400 people with 78 fund. Um, Mm. But different entrepreneur principles, and it's it's just not because you, they they're not successful. They are just they just and it's a the the premise of a, of an entrepreneur type or franchise type of agency business in any of the insurance companies. It it has to be a growth model. If they just Absolutely. maintain, they are all in trouble. If those yeah. franchise principles just maintains because he's going to have his fifteen twenty people and that's it, then mm. there is very value in that business for for the insurer for himself the yes. insurer is looking for growth from there because otherwise he could have just brought them into an agency environment where you're paying salaries to yeah. sales leaders and, and 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 not the like but in any case um stayed there for for five years which was totally unbelievable but i can tell you this it was a culture shock to me to understand how right. it works and to understand and also what I learned there, which was one of the most for for all entrepreneurs, that there's a couple of things that I can like. The first thing is I don't care what business it is. If it's a bottom mm. shop or what you're doing or what anyone is doing, um, Nick, the first thing that you need to understand is only and there's only three things that can make it that breaks all of these things. Mm. That and like I said, the first one we already said is recruiting. And I'm not talking about recruiting financial advisors. I'm talking about recruiting new customers. Yes. Um, Nick, can you just give me a sec? We have to sure. stop. I just want to pay my, pay my garner. Just hang no. on one sec. Sorry. <laughs> no problem at all. He's waving at me, so he's standing there. Hang on a sec. All right. I'm just going to do a clap so I know where to edit. I'm back and I'm yeah. fat, but in any case. <laughs> yeah. So I just had to put it quickly. No problem. Let me just any do case, a quick clap so I can just mark it on the line. So with the clap, I check where the big spike in audio is, and that's where I know to find the edit quite quickly. Okay. Hmm. So in terms of that, I mean, so the first thing is if you're running an entrepreneur business, you've got to bring new clients and you can't stop. Yeah. You cannot stop. You, you you are bringing in new clients all the time. If you want to have, if and I think it's for any company, it's for Larger Liberty, it's for Standard Bank, it's for EPSA, 
you have to be able to bring in new people and new clients all the time. Absolutely. The next, is, the next thing is the reliance on your top performer or your top client. If you do that and that person moves to someone else where he finds better value, mm -hmm. you are dead. If someone brings in, and I've actually had one of the most wonderful discussions with her, he said, the moment someone does more than 20% of your business, you actually have to terminate that relationship. Absolutely. You, and Absolutely. It's the most difficult thing that any entrepreneur can ever do or move him to a larger person, a larger mm -hmm. business where he disappears into the, where he, where he mm -hmm. can disappear. The problem for the smaller oak is that is the person that is paying his bills at the time, but he's not prepared to take the chance. But let me tell you that if it is a close relationship, like for example, a group of agents or anything and like a liberty mm -hmm. thing, um, he doesn't leave by himself. There's always the five hanger ons that think, if I stick to this oak, I'll also become successful. Not that they ever will, yes. but they leave. So there's always a, a walkout. And they, we used to call them walkouts. But I think that sort of same principle has to do for 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 other businesses as well. If you're selling bulk time or whatever, you know, yeah. you can't rely on that on that big oak. You've got to make sure that there is that that you don't have that particular thing happening to you. And then the last thing that I learned there was cash flow. Right. And that is that <laughs> there is such a huge difference between profits and cash flow. Yes, as it is, and yeah, you can you you could have made five million rand profit if you were able to pay your bills in April. Yes, and that is the calculation. If you're not able to pay your bills your bills in April, there is no profit in this company because it will eventually just fold. You need to be yeah. able to go and save money, put money, you need to understand cash flow. That was my biggest thing. Mm. Any case, so that's how those businesses folded. And I can see that's still happening in some of our franchises and the like. Um, from there, I move but, on. But it's culling that, it's culling that bottom 20% that's necessary so you can serve the other 80% better. And yeah. th the truth is within the environment and having spent 15 years within it, Failure is only due to your lack of ability to listen and apply what those who want you to succeed are telling you to do. There, there's, if you fail in that industry with it, that support structure, it's all on you. Yeah. And if you succeed, it's because of everyone around you. That's what's so amazing about it. You know, no, no one succeeds because of who they are on their own it's because of the support and you we failed because we were not applying that support yeah um so nick from there mm. i went on to and i got an opportunity to move into what we called at the time mergers and acquisitions where we started looking and actively trying to attract other companies franchises and agency right. branches okay fantastic and IFAs and mm. brokerages and the single IFA and brokerages. We all it was there was a huge expansion needed, and for that same reason, if you do not renew and bring new in, mm. you will die. And we started bringing in new franchises and bringing in new people. And, and I went into that division, probably because of my background on to because of previous broker and understanding of the IFA market and surviving and also, franchise. <laughs> <laughs> and actually also understanding agency because now really yeah. you, you need to yeah. start understanding the, the the effect of agency board because it's it's very close to what the franchise principles have to do but yes. um then we went into that and i and i had to uh, uh, work there with a man called arthur marston who is mm. was quite an unbelievable i mean today if you really think about what he has achieved Outside of this work environment, he has now been. Um, I'll, I'll give him a punt because I don't. Um, yeah, um, Arthur has now done the seven highest peaks: the North Pole, the South yes. Pole. Uh, he's also done the seven highest volcanoes. And sure. the other day, he walked right. Over, the other day, he went and walked over Iceland. I don't understand okay. what is wrong with that particular person. But what an interesting man to work for. Um, right. What a, what, a, what, a, what a mindset that you can get from that particular person. But I have to admit that I have worked for, 
for unbelievable, with and for unbelievable people over the, over over the twenty eight years. And, and sure. Any case, um, and then I joined where I'm currently, where I currently am, um, in different versions. Where first I became head of business development, mm -hmm. which investments, which then became head of business development. But it was the wrong title because it's not business development what we do. We we then sort of got uh, um, another one. By the way, over the years, I've had a couple of six and one eight nines happen as well. Right. It is very, very bad when that happens to people. And it is one of the most difficult things that companies can go through. And I think sometimes companies don't really quite understand what the emotional thing is that they do to people when they do these things. And they all go... Oh, these HR ladies walk around and they oh no, that you know, we also we year to you, we year for you, but they're not there for you. People yeah. need to the only thing that is really quite amazing is then you have a lot of friends that you've built up over the years in companies. It's very sad, but they're the ones that will be supporting people yes. through six one eight nines and the like. But in any case, so then I joined what where I am now, and I'm now heading up sales enablement for Liberty, mm -hmm. which was quite amazing. I mean uh, sales enablement puts you right between the field and and the product houses, the various the risk products, the investment products, right. and all the various channels. You are there to support the channel, making sure that. Um, so, in my team, I have got currently we we do we do the induction where we train new advisors. Right. We do the bro we do protocol or he used to call it critical chain now it is invest this broker consultant academy we do two levels of that it takes about two years for broker consultants to start moving if they work diligently for broker consultants to move through and then for a new agent it takes about two years before you're a fully fledged agent um right uh, but we do that do that initial training but it's not only that. We also have. All, I've also got all the legal advisors um, working w with me, and we've got the risk specialist and the investment specialist, and then all our trainers and behavioural people working together. So it is quite an unbelievable team. It's not. It's, right. It's a size team, but if you're looking at the size of people that we are supporting, and the only reason why we could get this, why we could get it right with a fairly small team, is because it's a. a Incredibly qualified team. I mean, the the minimum requirement is that even if you start off with me, and you don't have a CFP, that right. you will have your CFP with it with within two years. And I'm sure, like for me that have started in the industry, and I was we were talking about the DPFM years mm. when we just started, and how important that is. And I can say this: if you don't, if you want to be in this industry today, you have to do the study and the learning. You do your CFP. Right. It is so important because it will assist you right through. The career is a professional career. As a financial advisor, whether you're an agent or you're a, finance, a broker, it doesn't matter. Right. The professionalism uh, uh, comes from your knowledge. I think if, if we can touch on that for a minute, because I don't think there are many people in the industry that actually have your experience around this in terms of who is the industry for, who should be considering looking at it. Is it guys out of high school, finishing university, postgrads, business owners who maybe took strain during COVID and are looking at something different? Who, what are the traits that you see within the winners within the insurance industry and who is the industry for? <laughs> Not going to hit you with an easy one there. Yeah, but no, you've got 28 I, if, years. If, if, if I knew that, I would, yeah. I would be a multi millionaire. Instantly, I would just have all the money yeah. in the world. I mean, I would yeah. have the biggest sales force that you can possibly imagine. Yep. <laughs> I have surprised with, with youngsters. I, I can say this to you. I mean, I, I'll i never forget one of, the, one of our top financial advisors is actually an independent financial advisor at this stage. Mm. Was a waiter, um, he was a 28 year old waiter in what was that Monte Casino? Okay, sure. and he became a, a top financial advisor. Mm. I have had um, people that I have had bankers that said, I don't want to work, I need to start working with people that became very successful. I, I, I really, I, I, I'm 
I'm going to put it in a different way. The mm-hmm. people that are successful are people that 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 can take a no and just can, and, and can stand up and accept that there's a no and that it's not a personal thing and that can carry on. Right, absolutely. Right. The other thing is it is people that are incredibly diligent. Mm-hmm. It is people that understand that this is a career and a job. It's not you're not there to do a salespeople. You're not there to go for Friday afternoon drinks. When all mm. your mates are going for Friday afternoon drinks and you cannot sit and you don't have a full diary for the next week, you cannot leave. That yeah. is the people that are successful. The people right. that understand that this is the basics that I need to do. Because it's not about what is your closing ratio, how much do you sell and the like. Mm. Doesn't work like that anymore. But if you if you if you if you if you understand that you need to see five people a day every single solitary day, and that you have to make your diary full, that is the people that become successful. Whether yeah. you are, um, it doesn't. There, there is no there is no magic formula. I mean, and I am impressed. And I, I mean, like I'm, I met a financial advisor the other day in East London, a young black guy. He has got a diploma and, and, and he's got a diploma and he's been with us for four years and he's one of our top salesmen in risk and he's got a wonderful persistency. Mm-hmm. The cases stay out of the books, but he works so hard. So it's so difficult to to pick what is the right person because I can also say that I don't know whether I'll be the right person to right. go out there and, and understand that I've got to work this hard because you've got to work hard. But the people that can work hard are the ones that become successful. Um, sort of the best I can do. Okay. So they, of- listen, and 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 that that sums it up extremely well. And it's I think what what I understand you saying is it's simple. Follow the rule. Follow the advice. Follow the structure. Yeah. You know, in our days it was fifty, twenty, twelve, five, three uh, type of thing. You know, in terms of prospects and. It's just don't go out until your diary is full and, you know, don't go out until your diary is full and just work hard, you know, and no is not personal. I think those are the two things, right? No is never yeah. personal. And, you know, there, there's a one, Gil Girard, who is the top car salesman uh, in of all time. He's got the record. I think he sold 17,000 vehicles in a seven-year career, something absolutely insane. And he, I read his story in one of the Million Dollar Round Table books. And he just said he has a view that everybody is a Gil Gerard client, whether they are now or will be in the future. So if he gets a no, he doesn't. He maintains that relationship and just stays with it. It's like that tenacity, but do the basics. It's like what I, it's very, very similar, Kheri, to recovery, to staying sober. You know, follow the rules, follow the fel- the 12 steps in the program and you'll stay sober and it's hard and do the hard work. And I think yeah. when people come and think it's easy, but you know, it, it's not as hard as being hungry. It's not as hard as not being able to pay your rent. And uh, it, it's, Absolutely. you know, yeah. but, but then being able to send your kids to a great school and to be able to travel. And, you know, that's what I wanted to sort of chat to you about now um the the pictures behind you and sort of how do you stay sane you know the the the, this lifestyle can afford you an incredible lifestyle or the industry because of multiple things but annuity income and a referral basis where you know i've used that to build the gym we don't do sales and marketing We, we we do social media but we don't drive that all of our business or at least the vast majority is referral because referral maintains the culture that you want to maintain because like-minded people will refer you and you know that's it so now, how how do you how do you look after Harry what do you do because it's a lot of pressure it's a lot of work um, we can see some pictures of the skiing behind you and the craziness <laughs> and how do what do you do to stay sane what do you do to look after yourself and to keep your amazing attitude I've got I've got a huge base of really good friends um, mm. within Liberty, right? Um, and and also without. I mean I I mean like we spoke about it earlier. I've really got over the years. I've just met some unbelievable people. If you're looking at people like 
uh, uh, Jen van den Hensburg. I mean, mm-hmm. there's just so many. I mean, uh, any power, Jen, Jan Mini, whether I work close with them or not, Hazel Lerman and, 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 mm-hmm. all my, and, and some of them have come, become my best friends outside of work where they've left and moved away from Liberty and we still are really, we, we, we still see each other. So I've got a, a huge amount of friends that I still deal with. And, and I tend to see, um, you have to have a good sense of humor. Unfortunately, mine right. is a bit black, yeah. but it is what it is. Well, that, that, um, then it's a good sense of humor. <laughs> you know, um, uh, I'm very lucky that I've been, we, I've been uh, at a group of friends that have been skiing in Austria. Mm. I think this year I'm leaving on the 28th of Feb and I'm going for the 21st year that I'm sure. going skiing. And and it's just, it, it is the weirdest thing because it, 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 it grew from a group of, it grew from a group of four mates that went. And the people that were there this year, I don't know from outside of skiing. Which is, right. They live okay. in the UK, they live in, they live in Nepal, they live in the UK, they live in Emirates. Two are down in Cape Town and two are, and there was an Australian. So it has just been, yeah. They, sure. It's just add on, and if you like it, and we're the like minded people, we started doing it. We had enough people think it's incredibly expensive, but mm. it's not a cheap holiday. Let me just put that out there. But I do think that if you're going down to Cape Town for December and you're going to be paying your rentals there, you might as well go ski. It's no, ab- to go ab- ski. absolutely. It's totally, <laughs> absolutely. To go yeah. In Austria for okay. a shorter time, but I time, mean, yes. you're, 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 yeah. Okay, well, that's fantastic. You know, I, so that's what I do. I, I yeah, I, I need to try and gym a lot more. Right. Those things and eat better. But uh, like I said, I, I have interviews with people that own gyms, but I don't get free membership uh, <laughs> or coffee for that. I remember I'm going to bring it back to those coffee that didn't arrive. <laughs> so, you, you know, j- just on a point uh, to mention, as part of Liberty and Stanlib, you know, we've been training you guys for a long time well over a decade and you know that you do actually have free membership to the gym so that you can come <laughs> in and train so just yeah. just to yeah, I, let me, let I me have just... to get off my arse and go I, I, <laughs> yeah. you know the one last thing I wanted to talk about yeah. Nick and this is yeah. like, I'm a single actor, but yes COVID was harder yeah COVID was for people like me and for people in this insurance industry and I don't think we we're getting back to where we were before before COVID. I think it changed a lot for for all mm. of us. We are trying to get our people back into the office, which is the hardest struggle yeah. that we've ever had to do. At at and 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 I um, actually had a that had a session earlier today where we were looking at from um, NMG what they were saying about um, the trends out there, and they find that the service that the financial advisors are experiencing from insurance companies mm. way below what it was pre pre covid pre covid mm. and i think the problem is we can't get our people so to go back into the offices we are struggling to build teams i think but mm. i don't know i mean you 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 deal with a lot of people in different in different places i just find it very difficult to get that team and and the things yeah. that have made me successful is by having a really good team and and getting and suddenly, it it's not there. You can't build that same relationships over uh, over Zoom. Uh, or over uh, what, yeah. yeah, you know, Routines. it's it, yeah, it's such an interesting thing that you say because, like, I mean, you you know my history with my drinking and starting off at Hereford as one of the top guys and flying and crashing and the guys Michael and Glenn basically saving my life by not kicking me out and by getting me to go into treatment. But I remember Monday morning, 8 o'clock, there was a meeting at Hereford for everybody. And it was the single most frustrating thing, particularly in later life when I had a massive hangover and I had to wake up and then go and sit on the highway. And (laughs) driving from where I lived in Bedford View to Bryanston, when I started at Hereford, was 20 minutes. And by my last, after a decade there, it was nearly an hour and a half the traffic was horrendous but that being said what i found and i can sharing with you in hindsight 
when you come into that meeting and you sit with your team and you have that 40 minute or that hour meeting in the morning, you leave that meeting a different person than when you arrived. You arrive as the weekend mindset and fun and this and that and 10,000 things going on in your head. But when you surround yourselves with those winners and those champions and those people who are driving so hard, you, you, you leave that meeting with that mindset and you're very focused and committed. So I, I agree with you completely. In office is invaluable. You know, the conversations around the coffee machine, the just the opportunity to pop in and talk to somebody. But just that energy and that vibe, I think it's something that hasn't really been assessed yet in terms of its value. And it should actually be something that's compulsory because the long-term benefits are immeasurable. And I can take it even further, which makes mm. it, you know, if, you, if you're going to be sitting with, um, if, if I had to join, we were, to, well, we were saying what makes me, what makes me sane and what makes me mm. carry on. I, I never I mean, used the word sane. I was... No, but I know, that's true. <laughs> Sane-ish. It's any word to use with me, but yeah. in any case, um, <laughs> No, the, the, the real reality is if I had to join a company now and mm. as a youngster, you join a company like Liberty now or, or whatever, it doesn't matter. I join your gym mm. and everything happens online. I am the loneliest person. I will sit, be sitting in my yeah. house at a desk or in a weird office space in a desk because I don't have Wi-Fi. And, and, if, and, if you, and if you really think, I mean, I'm looking at my... Um, my maid's son has got a, uh, has got a nice job. Um, um, oh, my domestic son, yeah, so he, mm -hmm. he lives here as well. Um, and the light, he, he sits there and, he, and, and, and he's got nothing. He's 24 years old. He doesn't know anyone that he works with. Sure. His yeah. group of friends after COVID has sunk, has sunk to nothing. Yeah. They've all been doing stuff. They are, he is lonely. Like, you know, when you, when you look at someone, you just realize, that person is lonely. So how do you get that loneliness and how do you get these people? Because I think, I think that the world, you know, there's a lot of problems. A mm. lot of people will have a lot of problems because it's still, still happening because we're not getting back into the, and no. even if it's just for sad to get back. But we, we haven't seen the consequences yet of what we've been no. through. And I think everybody who went through COVID, which is everybody, has changed fundamentally as a person, as, a, as their profession, as their career, their business, it's all changed. I think the reality is that companies need to make a decision where they make coming back compulsory. And if you can't be part of that culture, you need to go and be elsewhere. And then you focus on the culture because it comes down to we control what we can. You know, the serenity prayer in sobriety is grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. It comes down to, okay, guys, Monday morning meeting. If you don't like it, you're not part of the team because that's going to benefit anyone because those who don't want to come in don't understand the value that they're coming in has to their colleagues where you do develop those friendships yeah. and in a passing conversation, Oh, you play paddle. Let's go on Thursday, looking at your, your maid son, you know, which it, has really taken off. Even I've got on a paddle board lately. Brilliant. And I'm excellent. It. No, what, yeah. a, what an amazing, I mean, yeah. I'm like, I used to play, tennis, but, but how that's, much yeah. fun can that be? That because, is just... because of the social aspect, hey, right, Harry, it's <laughs> social. And it's face it, to it, face, it, and it's that's what it, why it's pumping. I mean, I, I don't think that there's still an action cricket court around. <laughs> no. There might be one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's the weirdest thing. Yeah, and you're I not mean, like, drink, yeah, you're not drinking as much after paddle. No, I mean like, but it is such a lovely thing to do, and, and yeah. you, actually, if you get a good game going, it's fun. Absolutely, absolutely, you know it's a lot of fun. Well, Kerry, thank you so much for your time, dude. We really appreciate it. Perfect and the amazing insights that you shared. And I think like to build a long-term career within an institution, within a corporate is fantastic. And what you've shared in terms of moving into different divisions, developing your growth set and developing sort of your mind, your expertise, you don't have to leave to have that. And I think uh, from my side, you know, for both of us, our blood is blue. We're very loyal and passionate about liberty 
and the brand and the people and what it represents fundamentally. It's a good place to be. Uh, the insurance industry is a good place for someone who wants to build a long-term professional career and who is willing to put in the work and to shut up and do what they're told because that's what it really comes down to. Apply what you've learned. I mean, look at Martin Tucker. No doesn't mean anything to him. And he never applied any rocket science or anything to this. He did what he had to do. He did what he was told, and he built an amazing business. Yeah. Um, so many examples of this. So, but really, here we, we appreciate your time, and congratulations on the, the work anniversary. I don't know if there's anything you would like to just to close out with. No, I'm perfectly happy. Yeah, okay, okay. awesome. Pleasure. I'm going to end the Thanks recording, and then I'll say goodbye. All right. Thank you, Kerry. Okay.